Alright guys, today let's talk about Shutter Island, which is a movie that I actually had not seen before. It's Scorsese, and it's one that I've always wanted to see, just never had the chance to. Um, horrible, I know. I need to see Wolf of Wall Street too, in terms of like big Scorsese movies, and I know there's a couple more, but like those two were ones that I've wanted to see so badly, and I just never had the chance to see them, and I'm really wanting to rectify that with Shutter Island, which, watching this movie, this movie was from top to bottom, in terms of filmmaking, in terms of uh, a movie that will stand the test of time, I feel like this one stands up with those classics that have come out ever since film was created. This one is a movie that's going to be remembered, and it has been since it came out in 2010. And this movie just blew me away, and I was already expecting it would be good because of all the high praise. And it's Scorsese, obviously, and I think that going into it, I was like, it's going to be great. And even if it isn't, then it'll just be fine. But this, even more so, just blew me away than I expected. Um, in terms of the performances, in terms of the story structure, they're both incredible. The acting, I think, Leonardo DiCaprio was great in this movie, and it's one of his most memorable roles to me. Like, he really knocked it out of the park. And he has to portray so many emotions with his character, so many ways of interpreting all this stuff going on where he is hearing multiple things happen on this island, not understanding and not fully getting an idea of what this is, what is going on with him and with all the people around here. So I love the fact that he does that and how his his acting is incredible because he has to do so many different emotions, both so many different emotions evolving all this stuff. Um, being an investigator and the story structure I think is really incredible because it does have a linear flow in terms of this character this uh, investigator um, Teddy and then Mark R Ruffalo as Chuck these two investigators go on to Shutter Island to find the 47th um, in inmate that is missing and they're trying to figure out where this person is and it does have a basic, like, act one, two, and three, where, like, this character is following following this case. But while this happens, there's many scenes in between where Teddy either is, re is remembering things of, like, the guy who burned down his apartment and he murders him in cold blood, or with his wife where she dies in the fire. And... It really is incredible with those scenes. And the scenes with him and Michelle Williams, I feel like they probably were talked about, but they needed to be talked about more, because that... Talk about not showing much, but giving completely every single thing you need to know. And feeling the emotions. Feeling the emotions between both these characters, between her being dead, and him imagining she's there, and her saying, like, I've got to go, I'm not really here. Those scenes are incredible, and that moment that it, that I've seen before I even saw the movie, that moment where she fades away into and into dust, like she burns, like in his arms, that is incredible, and that just really blew me away. And it's one of those scenes that I did see before this movie, not knowing what the context of it was, but but I remember seeing that, and I thought that was a really cool image, and that is a great image better in fact because it has such a great emotional like moment and it and it pushes this these two characters where one is not even alive that is really incredible um and I like I said I love the story structure where it's like it shows all these scenes of him and his wife him killing this other person while in the current time in the 1950s in this movie and that just blew me away so the narrative was really cool and really interesting, and it never lost its pace. It always flowed very well because it was so interesting portraying, seeing scenes from his past, seeing scenes of his dead wife. It it works so well on all those levels. And I'm basically just going to go skirt to the ending now because the whole movie is fantastic. Um, but I think the ending is the most um, important thing that I want to talk about. So, of course, spoilers. Spoilers. But I love the fact that whenever you get to the end with Ben Kingsley, he tells um, Teddy that your real name is 
Andrew Leonis, and he's the name that he's been looking for in the movie, and you realize when Ben Kingsley puts up these four names, and I was catching on to this right before he said it, but these all these names looked like they had the same letters, and then he says it. He says that he uh, the, this is an anagram for all the same person, and that blew me away. I can't believe that it's... It's not something that a person can obviously catch without seeing them written down, those four names. But when they were written down, it, it was cool because you did not realize that they were literally just anagrams for one thing. And that is really incredible. And it shows that this character has been an inmate for two years. That is... It, I mean, it's a surprise that, like, movies have done before, but that... Just how it was incorporated worked incredibly well. It made it seem so fresh, even though it's been done before, but it's like, oh, you're already crazy, or you've already been here for a long time. But in this movie, Martin Scorsese, for some reason, made, or for some great reason, made this unique, even though it's been done before. And that's what I really love about this movie. He can make this movie really interesting, despite being used before in other movies. Like, this is very, very incredible. Um, and I liked how the wife angle, because you have another woman in the movie halfway through where Emily Mortimer plays, where she says to Teddy, like, I buried you. I, I buried you. I, I remember burying you, and she freaks out. And then it... This is one thing that I'll have to realize while watching multiple viewings, because I know this one kind of warrants that. But the wife... I mean, the Emily Mortimer character who thinks that she buried him and like she killed her kids, drowned them. I like the, t I really love the twist that it incorporates in how Michelle Williams' his real life, real wife in the movie, actually did drown his kids and murder them, and then, then uh, he was there during this, finding them dead, which gives the best scene in the movie in terms of performances. Whenever Leonardo DiCaprio he finds his kids dead in the water, that, that was just. Hard not, too hard to handle in terms of how realistic his performance was. Like, that just blew me away. Um, so the wife really did drown the kids, and I really loved that, because it, like I said, it was doing the thing in the halfway through where it's like, Emily Mortimer was this person who drowned her kids, but then no, it's all really this story that was botched in different ways with different inmates, and with this character having four different names. Um, that just was incredible whenever you figure out that the real wife, Michelle Williams, did it. And it just was really sad and really... Because the way that Andrew Lidas says to Ben Kingsley and Mark Ruffalo, who Chuck, who he realizes has been his psychiatrist for two years, so he hasn't been his investigator friend. That was great, but whenever, you, whenever he figures all this out, it's just... It blew me away, and like I said, it's it's a kind of a thing that's been done in other movies before, where it's like this character realizes he's been insane and been trapped in a place for a long time, or like, but like this just does a fantastic job of having all these things in the movie as a whole become one thing at the begin at the end of the movie because it w it was botched on purpose with all these different characters to throw you off like what's real and what's not real and and they really gave a close to definitive answer with the kids drowning with him being part of these multiple names with being there for two years that just blew me away just blew me away it was incredible um and i like the fact that whenever andrew like Whenever it shows him with his wife after she murdered the kids, he tells Ben Kingsley, like, I I knew that she had a bug in her brain. I should have did something. I should have helped her. But then that she just did it. She murdered the kids. And, like, it's his fault. So he feels at fault, too. And that just has a strong, like, reasoning to feel bad for the character, like I do. Because, like, he just was too late, I guess, to, to help his wife out. And she did something unredeemable, like kill, literally murdering his three kids, that that just god, just blew me away, and it was just so 
incredibly well done and how it was structured. Um, and I like the fact that after that, it goes back to... Like, it, it's the end of the movie, and it goes back to Andrew, who thinks he's Teddy again, talking to his psychiatrist, who he thinks is Chuck, and saying, like, he wants to get off the island. So it's like it went, again, back to the beginning of the movie. Um, even though he's there and an inmate. But, like, he goes... Like, he's taken away by some people to go back to his room, but, like, he, he talks to his psychiatrist like he's still Chuck. So that... That was cool, just bringing it back full circle again and making it the... Basically the beginning of the movie again, but it... But it gives all you need to know about what really happened, and it just... God, it, it's... It just was so much, like, in a good way, there was just so much to think about in this movie, and it just did... I want, I'm going to rewatch this eventually again, because this just... Watching it, I know that you've got to watch it multiple times, because seeing how these characters interact with each other, seeing how these different story elements, who which are from separate characters, become one at the end of the movie, I want to see that again, and I want to see how that works, and this really just blew my mind. This was incredible. Great Scorsese movie, and I really think that out of all his movies, this is definitely one of his best that I've seen. I haven't seen all his movies, but this is definitely an incredible one, and I really enjoyed it. I can't believe I waited this damn long to watch this movie, but God, so great, so great. I really, really incre enjoyed it incredibly so much, and it just, God, it's, I'm rambling, so thanks, guys. Just incredible movie.